Hello, everyone. That was such a nice video. It always gets to me um, because it really shows what our campus is like. And so um, thank you for tuning in. I know for some of you, it is evening time. And for us here in Walla Walla, we are just starting our morning. I have my coffee going here. Oh, you can't see it. There it is with the Whitman mug. Um, so we're so excited you all are here. A big congratulations again to you for being admitted. Congratulations again over and over. Um, so we are so excited uh, to have you here today. You have some great, some great people will be joining me in a second. Um, and before we get started, I do want to uh, give you a little bit of housekeeping. And so this is going to be more of a question and answer session. So it's really a time for you to ask us questions about being an international student out at Whitman or what it's like to live in Walla Walla as an international student, the types of classes you're gonna take, um, anything about kind of coming uh, outside of the United States into the United States. Um, this session is going to be recorded for your friends who are not able to join us today. Um, you will also continue to receive some emails from us, so please check those. Every Monday you will receive an email from Julie Dunn, and that'll give you some next steps um, of what to do uh, for your process to prepare you to come to Whitman. Okay, we also have more virtual events that will be available to you. And we have our Leah who is supporting us in the background and she will add some links in the chat for you to take a look at. If some of you have the good uh, fortune to visit us in person, we also have some events in person for you to um, come in and check us out. All right, so now to get started, we are gonna introduce ourselves so that you know who is speaking to you. Uh, this morning, and we have some fabulous e uh, people. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We'll start with our students. Um, and yes, yeah, so we'll start with Marianne. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Buenos dias. My name is Marianne. I am an international student from Guatemala. Um, and then I'm also senior here. So this is uh, my last semester here at Whitman. I'm a sociology major, history minor very much interested in Latin American politics and history um, and also global politics. Here on campus, I work for the admissions office as a senior intern, um, but then another job that I also have on campus, um, it's a community-based oral history project, which is called the Listeners Project Queremos Escucharte, which, which aims to amplify the voices of marginalized communities here in Walla Walla. So that's a little bit about myself um, in terms of clubs. I'm involved with the Global Wheaties Club, uh, that basically brings support to international student and just creates community for us here um, away from home. So that's just a little bit about. Thank you for that, Marianne. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Nomonde. I use she pronouns. I come from Zimbabwe and I'm a psychology major with a French minor. I'm also a senior here and I work in admissions with Marianne as a senior intern. Um, I also work with the Korean Community Engagement Center here and I work as the leader for prof, uh, nonprofit and community partnerships. And some of the clubs that I'm involved in is the Women of Color Club, which I'm currently the president of here. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. And good morning, my name is Greg Lecky and I am the director for Inter International Student Support Services. I have been here at Whitman for about three years, originally from Poland. I, I've been in the US for probably about 20 years or so. And um, I will be working with you all on your visa documents and later over the summer on pre-orientation programming when you arrive on our like five days long orientation and later throughout uh, your time at Whitman, uh, helping you with um, everything that has to do with uh, your immigration status and your experience here as an international student. And I am looking at the list of our attendees here and I know I connected, connected with some of you already um, and we are working together on some of your documentation. So thanks so much for being here. Hopefully you enjoy the session. Thank you, Greg. And everyone, my name is Veronica Ortiz. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission and I do oversee admission and enrollment of international students here at Whitman. 
likewise with Greg of the attendees. I'm sure I've connected with all of you at one point. Um, I am originally from Los Angeles um, and that is my home, although Walla Walla is my home as well. And um, I am sure I can connect with some people and tell you some fun things about LA if you are interested in that. Um, okay, so we are gonna get started here and have uh, Marianne and Lamonde give us some information about their experience. And then Greg will talk a little bit about the visa process. Um, but as they talk to us, um, please feel free to send us questions in the Q&A box and we will answer those on air. So to get us started, I think all of us are pretty curious um, how Marianne and Amanda, how you guys made your journey to Whitman. And so if we can start with Marianne, tell us a little bit about um, why you chose Whitman um, and why it's been good to you. Well, thank you, Veronica. It's definitely been a long journey <laughs> uh, about what, I'll say five years in the making. I've already been he uh, here for four years and one year of preparation. Um, uh, something that I forgot to mention is that I graduated from a UWC school. So I went to Changshu, China, and I had the incredible experience, experience of um, having an admission officer from Whitman visit us. Um, and I remember I had a mock interview. I was interested in Whitman, and that's how I started to find out more about campus. Um, through those conversations that I was having with the admission officer back in 20, um, that was 2018 um, in China, 2018, 2019, roughly. Um, and then I just found out how great of a community Whitman was. Um, I wanted, I knew I wanted to go somewhere that was like small, where I could feel um, seen and appreciated. I got a chance to connect with my professors. I knew that the classroom size on average was like 17 students. And I was like, wow, that's wonderful. I don't really want it to, I didn't really see myself in a big campus community where I felt like I would get lost and I, I wouldn't find a place for myself. Um, so that's how I made the decision. Um, all the support that I received, as soon as I got admitted, every Monday I was receiving emails. I was, um, it seemed like people were interested in me coming to Whitman. Um, so that was definitely a determining factor. And I was like, that's the right place for me to go. I also wanted to be closer to home and the Pacific Northwest didn't seem like a, a bad idea for me to come. Um, I love the outdoors, um, green spaces, and that definitely checked the box for me. Uh, and all the re different resources that Whitman had to offer, I got to know more about the Career and Community Engagement Center, the support that I will receive throughout the four years to make sure that after I graduate, I have somewhere else to go, whether that be finding a job or grad school. Um, so I knew I will be supported all throughout. And yeah, that made me feel like I... I needed to come here um, and I have no regrets. I came to the right place. Um, so that's a little bit about my journey. In case we also have any UWC students in the chat, I can also just answer any questions um, if you have related to the transition and what um, not, but definitely I love it here. It, it's making me a little bit nostalgic and sad to know that I will be leaving um, soon, but it's been an incredible journey. Yeah, I definitely have to agree with Marianne. I, um, chose one of the many reasons why I chose Whitman was because of the support systems that they have here and the relationships that you can build with your professors and the people that you work with. And just knowing that the school is a place that really tries to set up its students for success after they graduate is definitely one thing I appreciate. But I think two of the top things that really did make me choose um, Whitman College is that like one of them is a psychology program here. And I came into Whitman knowing that I wanted to study psychology. And I love that you get opportunities to do research whilst at school as well as outside of school. So since my first year, I've been doing discussed research with my professors. So basically he has a whole PhD on the emotion of disgust. So we've gotten to do a lot of like hands-on work with that, even wrote my thesis on that. Um, and also I wanted to go to an institution that had study abroad programs. So Whitman College does I encourage students to study abroad, and I really appreciate that. I got the opportunity to study in Paris last spring, so I'm really grateful for that. And one great thing is it doesn't matter your major. You can study wherever you want, and all the programs, um, all the majors here do have study abroad opportunities. So, yeah, really grateful for that. Okay, thank you for that. And, uh, Greg, before you tell us a little bit about the visa process, I am going to take this question here that came in. And it says, we have a student here from UWC India and in Pune, and they're asking, how is the transition like to go from a UWC school and then coming to the United States? They're asking the United States, but we can talk about the transition to Whitman as well. So go ahead. 
Okay, I can I can definitely go first. Um, so I think um, Whitman is definitely an academic rigorous uh, place that does offer support um, at the same time. Like they won't leave you alone um, struggling if you may. Um, they always bring support, but definitely being part of um, a boarding school like UWC that had the Ivy as curriculum just made the transition um, really smooth for me when I came here because um, I didn't feel the classes were as challenging. Um, it just kind of continued um, all throughout. I definitely kept on learning new things, new ways into like, you know, writing essays and presentations and whatnot, because this is definitely college. It's not going to be the same as the classroom when you were in high school, whether that be a UWC or whatnot, or IB or whatnot. Um, but it did support me um, in terms of like uh, being kind of like on the same page as different other students who had already been in an academic rigorous space here in the U.S. Um, so yeah, it was it was a smooth transition for me. I don't know if no one that wants to add something to that as well. And also the sense of community. I kind of like came from from that sense of community, appreciating community, hands-on work with community service, and that Whitman really offered those spaces outside the classroom for us as well. Yeah, I can definitely add on to that. Um, so I went to the UWC in Southern Africa, Waterford Gamsaba. And I must say, in classes, students that thrive the most are the international students. So y'all are probably at this point like, oh my goodness, IB is really stressful. But let me tell you something, you will be so grateful when you complete your IB, get your diploma, and you get into college and you come to your classes and you're the one person who knows those TOK questions are important. You'll know how to ask a question in the classroom. And I'm super grateful for that. And I just feel like the way um, UWC sets us up, like our demeanor is very mature, you know? So I think it's been a great transition trying to come into here and learning a new curriculum because we have so many like diverse perspectives and it's really helpful because then it helps you get connected with your professors and your other peers as well. And you sort of have this, um, because like Whitman College is academically rigorous, like Marianne says, you're already set up to be a hardworking student. You already know what it means to uh, need good time management. So um, I think the transition, like Mariano said, was very smooth. Um, in terms of like moving away from home, most of us may have moved away from home to some capacity when we had to go to UWC. So it's just like another study abroad as you continue into your um, college experience. So, yeah. Great. And that's awesome. I think one thing that always comes up with students is um, the traveling home throughout the four years or what you do during the winter break or spring break. So I'm wondering if you guys can speak to that a little bit and what that was like um, as your experience um, here at Whitman. Yeah, so um, we also get acknowledged that for a huge portion of our college experience, the one day uh, and I were um, during COVID, <laughs> So I did have a chance to go home. So I did spend um, about a year and a half in Guatemala. But then as I came back, I got to spend the past two summers um, working on campus. Um, so that was an incredible experience in terms of career development. Um, obviously, I was still feeling homesick because I, I was, but I had just left home. So, uh, but just being here with other peers, like a lot of international students, most international students stay behind on campus for big breaks like summer. Um, and it's like a very tight community. So it didn't feel like, um, you know, like I was too, like it, I fe it felt like I was home as well within the community. Uh, and also having the chance of working. Um, I was working for the admissions office as a tour guide two summers ago. And then this past summer, I was working as, as a senior intern. Um, that was an incredible experience. And also connecting with the Walla Walla community. During those breaks, I was able to really um, find like meaningful connections and establish relationship with um with the different um, partnerships we have here uh, with the community. So, um, and then in terms of winter break, I've been very um, grateful to have the chance to go home. Thanks to the money that I've saved working during the summers, I was able to, um, I've been able to go home the past, the past winter breaks. Um, and then in terms of smaller uh, breaks, like, you know, Thanksgiving break and spring break, we have a, an incredible program here on campus at Whitman for international students, which is the friendship family program, um, where you get paired up with a local family that basically becomes your family away from home. Um, so I have had the chance to do some traveling with them. They always invite me, we go like up to Seattle and then visit their family there. Um, this Easter, um, we want to go um, also to Spokane, and they invited me. So um, even in those breaks, I, I still get to do something with 
uh, my friendship family as well, which is an, an incredible experience. I've been able to visit different places um, as well. And some other breaks, I just stayed behind on campus working um, on campus um, and also just enjoying um, the different things that you get to do out, um, out here. And we also have a lot of trips that Greg and Greg's team get to put together for international students. Um, and we can go like hiking, sightseeing, uh, paddle boarding, kayaking, which is a lot of fun too. Yeah, um, I definitely, so Marianne mentioned a lot, but like student jobs here really do set you up for success because with those funding, then you can either just stay on campus, keep yourself busy, or you get the opportunity to save up some money to go visit somewhere else. And relatively, if you look at the right time, some places here are close by, so you can go with your friends. Um, my experience at Whitman is I didn't go home for during the pandemic. I spent it, most of it here on campus. Luckily, they were a constant of the fact that a lot of international students were not able to travel back home. So they had Cap, like housing open for students to stay on campus and such forth and you could still work on campus as well um I would say for me traveling is quite stressful considering I we live in the Pacific Northwest and I come from Zimbabwe so it's like basically the farthest you could possibly get um but I have had the opportunity to travel home um and one way you could also do that is I think it's really encouraged um a lot of students here really try to get involved in internships so one of the ways I was able to go home after the pandemic was by doing a Whitman internship and essentially students at women are given a grant from about three thousand dollars to five thousand dollars for you to, to do your internship wherever you would like in the world whether it's locally in the states or even back home so if you're able if you're interested in doing something quite exciting depending on whether it's related to your major or just wanting to hone in your skills and something you're more than welcome to do that i did my internship in zimbabwe where i worked at an orphanage and that allowed me me to also able to get home and see my family and Whitman was able to cover the flight as well to get there. So I think definitely finding ways to use all your resources in campus will allow you to um, travel around. And a lot of the breaks, one good thing is that a lot of students do stay on campus. So it never feels lonely, it's never empty. So most of your friends are probably gonna be around and you guys can all hang out. So I've spent a good fair uh, of breaks here. And um, also when you're busy, it doesn't you have a good time here spending like spring break with your friends and just kind of exploring the little uh, towns around the area even just to drive up to Seattle so yeah awesome so we have a question here that's going to segue into the second question so the question here is asked because the, the student has a contribution to make which is what we expect of all of our students and so they're wondering what it's like uh, to work on campus and if you guys can speak to that and then right after that um greg if you can take the next question and i'll read it out loud but for now namandia marian if you guys can speak to what it's like to work on campus and if you'd like to disclose exactly what that looks like feel free to do so but if not general terms is fine too yeah, for sure. Um, I also realized that there's a third question that's related to working on campus and how many hours an international student is allowed to work. So I'll start with that. Um, so once you are awarded um, work study, you're allowed to work um, 19 hours um, a week um, if you're under work study as an international student. And over the breaks, um, like the summer break or winter break, you can work full time, which is 40 hours. It's definitely a lot more than when you're uh, when the school is in session. So that's in terms of um, capacity of hours. In terms of jobs, there's so many jobs here on campus. Uh, obviously, Nomanda can uh, attest to that. Um, I've been uh, very lucky to have different kind of, kinds of jobs and gain different kinds of skills throughout my four years here at Whitman. But now I feel pretty much ready to just go out there, apply for jobs, because I feel like I have different skills in different areas. Um, so I work as a senior intern. I've worked pretty closely with the um, admissions office. I also used to be a tour guide. Um, from becoming a tour guide, then it's how I got to know more about the different jobs that the admissions office had uh, available. Um, other jobs that I've had have been because I was in a class really interested in the professor's research. So then just come up to me and they say, hey, you know, I have this possibly one month long project that if you would like to join, uh, might not be the whole semester, but then you can work extra hours with them. So I've been helping my politics professor um, translating some work that she gets to publish from the class, uh, from English to Spanish and vice versa. Um, I've also been able to help another professor from the sociology department who um, is also interested in oral history, also transcribe different interviews for his book. 
uh, which is pretty exciting. I never really saw myself being able to help someone write a book <laughs> in a way or contribute in any way. Um, so it's all about how involved you are also on campus because um, different job opportunities are going to come up. But I think something that I appreciate about Whitman is that they make sure that you have at least a job on campus um, to make sure that you can cover those um, hours. So um, yeah, they make sure that you are not falling behind. Just like I said, sometimes um, that was something that helped me to cover all those fees that I had to pay um, on the work study was staying over the summer um, and working over the summer. Um, so that I, it wasn't too stressful during the academic year to work so many hours. Um, so because over the summer you can you don't have classes and you can work up to 40 hours per week um, and there's definitely a lot of jobs on campus that do need uh, people to stay behind and work at least a good amount of hours so yeah that has definitely been my experience I feel like I've never been left alone um, I've been advised by different mentors I've been able to find different kinds of jobs that are fun and exciting um, and aligned with things that I'm pretty much interested in whether that be your major or other passions that you have um, but yeah, that's kind of been my experience, and I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I can just talk briefly about it. Um, I think also I encourage that uh, the summer before you guys arrive, um, just go on Handshake to get a, like a view or perspective on what job opportunities may be here on campus, and that could sort of set you up for, um, you know, better experience once you get here, but doesn't mean that you necessarily have to apply to them just so you can see uh, what is available. But I do remember my first job at Whitman. In fact, it was actually my first job ever in my life. And I remember I, um, it was a teaching job. America Reads America Counts. So three times a week, I would go down to the elementary school and help tutor like third graders who would tell me the greatest stories. And it's so funny because my first paycheck was only $180. And in my mind, I was like, this is so great. Like I have my own money. I told my parents, I felt like I was so accomplished. You know, I felt like I had... Um, just grown up and it was so great and unfortunately the pandemic happened so that cut short but I think I've been able to work in amazing um departments here like the admissions office started off as a tour guide which is the greatest experience because I love to talk I'm not going to lie to you guys so being able to do that and now Marianne and I are both here and we get to work with prospective students and wonderful admitted students and I think it's a great experience and I've also been working with the Korean Community Engagement Center so I think what's really great is you can have multiple jobs in different places and um you can and these can allow you to like sort of like bring all your skills together and I really appreciate that you know and this is a good work balance work balance and class balance I have been able to manage that and I'm not saying that I ever get to like 20 hours a week but essentially like if you wanted to it is possible and your professors understanding that you are also a working student and the people that you work for also understand that you are a student so um everyone understands like all the realms that you're and all the things that you're involved in so it's like really fun it's like joining a club but you get paid for it and you can interact with other amazing people so um my work experience here has been quite amazing I'm super grateful because the skills that I have gotten I've been able to apply them during like the interviews that I'm going through trying to find job now as well as just like outside skills as well but yeah I love that thank you both for that and of course with the opportunities of working in the United States we do have to pay taxes and we are in tax season, as a matter of fact. Every April 15th, for every person who works in the United States does have to pay taxes. And for some of you, this is a very important topic. And I'm actually going to turn it over to Greg. If you can tell us, so Greg, the question that came through is that they have a question about taxes and how that works on an international scholarship. Um, if you could speak to that, but also speak to how taxes work with employment and how that's related. Very good. Uh, this is such a boring topic for most uh, students, so I, I will be brief. Um, how you get taxed in America depends on your nationality and on international tax treaties between your, your country and US government. Uh, so some of you might pay zero income tax, and some of you might pay um, you know, hundreds of dollars per semester um, in income taxes. And uh, before you come here or immediately after you arrive, we ask you to complete your tax profile and the tax profile allows us to understand your tax situation and uh, discover any potential tax treaties that the college can use to lower your tax obligation. This is a very helpful tool and very few schools in America use it. Um, if we recognize the tax treaties apply to you, we can lower your taxes right from the start. 
those of you who cannot benefit from tax treaties, unfortunately, will have to pay taxes uh, every semester. And uh, I, I suppose during your first semester, this is where um, a situation can be stressful because you are not yet aware how easily, relatively easy you can make enough money on, on campus to cover these expenses. But students uh, figure this out uh, quickly. We also help you to later file your tax return as Veronica mentioned. We offer uh, tools and, and help sessions to resolve your taxes because it, it is a complicated process. Many schools uh, don't uh, do that. But uh, if you follow the newsletters that um, I send out from my office every week, you will be able to resolve your tax uh, profile and then file your taxes on time. So even though it sounds like a stressful process, you, you get so much help and, and it's not really that bad. Uh, many times students come to my office and say, hey, this is actually very easy. So it's, it's not that difficult. Someone asked, uh, Veronica, there is a question about friendship family. And, and since I help run the program, I can say that if you want to be assigned to a friendship family, you will. You will. Uh, we, at the moment, offer a friendship family opportunities to everyone who is interested. Not all students participate in the program, but perhaps about uh, one third uh, um, uh, choose to do so. And I think, as Marianne said, it, it's just a, a very rewarding experience and, and, and a very fun experience to join friendship family program. So I am working on expanding this uh, to um, increase capacity as well. Great. Well, thank you for that. Um, I think if there is one thing that will unite us in the United States is our peril with paying taxes. Uh, so it's actually a fun time. Um, so yes, maybe, maybe not. All right. So we have a question about uh, the Greek system in college. And uh, if you can speak to that, that would be great. Yeah, I can, I can go. Um, so um, to start us off, not a lot of students are involved in Greek Five, only about 20% of students. I want to say uh, my first year, kind of into my sophomore year, I was involved in Delta Gamma. And it was, it was a really, it was a lovely experience. Got to hang out with some girls. But eventually I didn't stick it out because um, the, it was a pandemic and all the people in there were already my friends. So I was like, oh, I could just hang out with these people without having to add an extra thing onto my plate. But one great thing about Greek life here is you do not need to be involved in Greek life to partake in any of the events um, that they host. And also essentially what does happen is you can still be an honorary member. So now I'm considered like an honorary member to Delta Gamma or the fraternity Sigma Chi. So on campus, we have four fraternities and four sororities. The fraternities have their own homes, but the sororities are housed inside Prentice Hall. But so if you guys ever get like a video, if you watch the video tours, you'll see that Prentice is shaped like an H and on the wings, that's where the sororities are. Um, and in terms of Greek life, yeah, I think for the most part, um, a lot of students do, um, what Greek life does is they just do a lot of philanthropy events. So if you're really interested in like volunteering or helping out with the community, then you can get involved in that. But yeah. Yeah, nothing else to add on my end. I'm not involved in Greek life, so I knew the one that will take this question. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Okay, um, this question, I think, Greg, you can take it. We have a question about the possibility of getting a visa if passport is going to expire um, due to some political instability in the country. And actually, Greg, if you can talk about what it is, what the visa process is like, the I-20 process, I think some of our students here are familiar with that process, but if you can just speak to it and then talk about kind of this question yeah. specifically. No, that's, that's very good. So um, many of you would have received emails from me already inviting you to work with me on visa, and I recognize a number of names within the attendee group. And uh, I already processed some visas and I know a couple of people already have their visas approved, which is wonderful so early. Um, the, the specific question on getting the visa uh, in a passport that is expiring soon, yes, that should be possible. Typically it's the six month mark when the US embassy becomes kind of unhappy about um, uh, putting the visa in the passport if the passport is expiring within six months. In this case, uh, it is perhaps more than six months. Additionally, you just need to bring this up, that, that replacing the passport now, it's, uh, it's not possible. And um, that should work uh, perfectly fine. Of course, once you arrive to the US, you can, you can then deal with your embassy 
in the US and have that passport replaced, it is important to have a valid passport while in, in the US. The visa process itself, very briefly, I will ask you to complete some forms, including financial form, forms. If your expected family contribution is less than $100, so basically you're on a full scholarship, uh, there is very little for you to do. Basically, just send the passport and um, uh, to me. Um, if your financial uh, family contribution is over $100, then I will ask you to provide financial statements from banks, from your parents, guardians, or sponsors, showing that the money is available. I ask you to provide statements that are recent within the last three months. And, uh, and usually the process doesn't take very much time at all. I can typically issue this document uh, within just um, a few days. So the good news is that I am now able to send I-20 forms to you, the visa forms by email, which saves us so much time and money and effort. I can email it to you and they need to print it and you need to sign it. So you have to sign it, like they say, wet signature. I can digitally sign it, you have to sign it and you take it for the visa interview together with your financial documents and with your... Um, you know, your passport and, and everything else. Remember, you will have to complete DS-160 form. This is your visa application. And this is new for this year. And it's important piece of information, the CV's fee, right? Everyone has to pay CV's fee or $350 this year for, student on, for students who are uh, high, financial, high financial need students. I am going to be paying CVC fee for you and I will send the receipt to you as well um, with a secure message. So you will get that sorted out. You will still have to pay your visa application fee, uh, which is, I think, 100. No, it's probably $200 now. The visa application fee is $200, uh, but CVC fee is $350. Veronica, is this answer comprehensive enough or you want me to go into more details? I think that's good. I do want to highlight two things that you said, Greg. Um, if students need uh, assistance or have questions about paying for SIVA's fees, do reach out to myself and Greg, and we will guide you through that individually. Um, and I just wanted to make a smart comment that it's hard to believe that at one point we had to send the SIVA's forms right through mail, and now they're in a PDF copy, which is amazing. And Marianne, you have a question? Yeah, um, just learn from my experience. Apply for your visa ahead of time. Don't wait until the last minute. You don't want to be in such high stress because you're already packing to go to, to come to Whitman. Um, so I cannot stress this enough. Please apply on time. Um, stay in touch with Greg. Make sure that you have all the documents. Um, and we definitely appreciate to see all the support that Whitman is giving um, in terms of financial support. So that's pretty much appreciated because it's not really their responsibility since it's like um, the forms that are outside within the within the um, academic year, but um, yeah, there's a lot of support, but please apply as soon as possible because the process might take a while. Even if you know you're already admitted to a college, they will still be asking questions. So just make sure you apply on time so that um, you can come here on time and don't miss out of any of the international student orientation or the student orientation. So learn from my experience, just apply on time um, and in a timely manner. <laughs> That's a great reminder. Thanks, Marianne. Yes, it, and and Greg has a very good track record. Whitman has a very good track record about visa issuing. Um, so I know it seems stressful, but it will get done in a very timely way. So do connect with Greg on your visa uh, questions and process. Okay, we have a couple of questions about campus life. So we're gonna go back to that. I'm so excited by the following question, which I think is really relevant. And that is, um, and it's completely appropriate, and I'm glad it has been asked. Um, it's talking a little bit about what the social life is like on campus, if there are a lot of parties, or if it's a quiet community, studying, and stuff like that. And I do have to say, Marianne and Namandi are outstanding students. They're outstanding colleagues. I think they do party, um, so I will... Close my ears, <laughs> feel free to talk about it and go ahead. Okay, yeah, I can get us started for sure. Um, I just wanna say, uh, to start us off that your experience here at Whitman is really what you will make it out to be, right? So if you want to go out, you will have 
a really good time. You'll make friends. You'll have an amazing time. If you want to stay in your room, then probably that won't be the best way to spend your four years because then you won't be able to experience what the outsides can offer. So to start off about well, like what campus can offer is that there's always something going on no matter what the time is. So I'm a big fan of taking study breaks. And so sometimes what I do is just look at Whitman today and see what is happening. So there's always an event happening. There's probably an event or a talk happening right now as we speak. So that for sure is available for students. Um, Whitman campus also does have fraternities, as we mentioned. So the fraternities tend to host events um, during the weekend. So this could be Friday nights and Saturday nights. You are not obligated to go to any of these, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. They have open door policies and they're also great ways to make friends because some of these, some a lot of the people in these uh, communities are lovely human beings. So my friends and I are big fans of sort of just going out to these spots whenever you want to. Um, going out in Walla Walla may be different from where you come from essentially because you may expect to be at home at a certain time but you may be at home at a different time uh just a bit depending on where you come from but also a lot of students uh, have off-campus houses here so essentially at Whitman College um housing is available for all four years but you're only required to stay on campus for two years so right now I live off campus and so does Marianne and sometimes our homes will host um dinner parties with for our friends or for our clubs or for uh larger people that can be open to campus and it's really fun here because all the houses have different names and they're really beautiful um but also, like Marianne said, uh, she does love to get involved with the Walla Walla community, and so do I. And um, so what I do, walk downtown, and if I see somebody, I think, wow, your energy is amazing. I make friends with them. And um, also, Walla Walla is known for its wineries. Um, I'd say it, you guys will probably find out. So once you turn 21, um, you're able to explore um, the different things that the town has to offer. And uh, some students, well, this does not apply to us because we're not uh, able to work off campus, but some of your friends, uh, your local friends will be able to work at these wineries so you can spend an afternoon or a dinner at these wonderful wineries. So I think in Walla Walla, yes, it is a small town in Eastern Washington, but if you are looking for something to do, you will find something to do and you can be entertained in that sense. Um, yeah, I hope I covered that. <laughs> I feel like no Monday you should you should um, start giving a different tour now of the nightlife of Whitman <laughs> and Walla Walla. I I will approve that. Um, but just um, just to just add a little bit more on what um, Namanda said, for example, in on campus, I forgot to mention, but I am the chair of the Whitman Events Board, and we do put a lot of events together. Like we have in about two weeks and a half a prom night coming up. Uh, which happens at night. We offer food, there's music, we have a DJ. We also have another event, which is Taste of Africa coming up. International students do an incredible job at hosting cultural nights on campus um, and even off campus, because um, oftentimes there's an after party to the party that happened on campus. That's pretty common. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of events. There's a lot of venues for you to also bring like cultural events on campus. And just like I said, international students do an incredible job at making sure that that happens here on campus. I also got to mention, for example, if um, I'm a big fan of road trips, I love being um, just out and about exploring. Um, <clears throat> and I think like the area where um, and it's like beautiful and incredible. And there's the location of Walla Walla is just so ideal because you can just go to Oregon, you can go to, uh, you know, drive up to like Seattle or Bellevue or Spokane or go to Idaho. So even on weekends, if you just want to go somewhere else with your friends, just hop on your friend's car. If you have a car, hop on your car and then you take a road trip, uh, which I'm a big fan of. I recently went to Portland and you can do a lot more things there um, related to nightlife or just socializing. So it does feel nice that the location that we have, even though it's a small town, it's connected to so many other great areas that you can also explore um, and do more socializing. Yeah, and just to add on to that too, like Marianne said, you can um, travel around. So Whitman's also located, I think, in the a really great center in the sense that if you have friends who have applied to the other uh, UWC Partnership Liberal Arts, they can come visit you and you could go visit them. So that's a wonderful experience. And in terms of the outdoor programs, uh, Marianne mentioned this earlier, but Greg does put on a lot of events for students. So like, um, this is a quite like an outdoorsy community. And if Greg wants to speak more on it, um, more than welcome to. And we love to go outside. So if you want to go skiing, you've never skied in your life, hey, you can talk to Greg and there's an event available. If you'd like to go kayaking, if you've never gone, you can talk to Greg, it's available. And students get a fund to participate in these. So you don't need to um, worry about that. So it's a wonderful experience if you'd like to talk more about that, Greg. Well, in um, don't forget the Monday, 
and Marianne on April, I think, 20th, we are going overnight camping for the first time and rafting. So uh, that's going to be very exciting. Uh, uh, 20 students uh, will join us, uh, international students only, right? But we had, like you said, we had uh, wildflowers uh, tours. We had uh, different types of skiing tours, uh, paddle boarding, kayaking, uh, a number of hikes. And these are all for international students. And we designed these events. I work on these events in a way to make them very accessible to first timers, because many times international students don't have very much experience in this wild outdoors like we have here. So make it easy, we make it fun. And usually there is food involved as well. Uh, and, and that's the way I, I like to do that. Um, yes, lots of opportunities for different types of activities. And I love the way our international students have a a really nice energy about um, being a part of those. And I know I went skiing with, with you, Greg, not too long ago, and that was a lot of fun, very tiring, but um, awesome. And all of these events also include some kind of snack or food, uh, which uh, the food is very good over here, as people know, abundant in the United States. Um, so, uh, okay, thank you for all those answers. Whitman is a fun place, as you've heard firsthand. And we're gonna go ahead and switch back to um, some of the study opportunities on campus. Um, and I know both of you touched upon some of the research um, and internships you have, you have done while at Whitman. Um, but if you can speak a little bit more to um, kind of that question we have here about study opportunities and what that looks like for international students. Yeah, um, so I can definitely get us started on that. Um, so I, in terms of internships, um, I can say that my first year, I wanted to do an internship in Ethiopia, which is absolutely amazing because I grew up there. But unfortunately, the pandemic happened. But um, that didn't stop us because there were some uh, virtual opportunities still that were available for students to be able to partake in that. And um, I usually tend to do an internship during the summer. And the one I did was working at Orphanage, as I mentioned earlier, and you get a grant for that. But if you would like to do internships throughout the school year, that is also available for students. And I think a big part of that is that um, you can also do these internships locally. So a lot of that tends to work out much easier for a lot of students so that you can um, balance your work life and internship uh, work. But I think for the most part, what I have done the last couple of years is research with my professor. And I've been able to do this since my first year. And this research has honestly kind of like bled into my what I wrote my thesis on. And um, if you guys are interested, I can tell you more on that <laughs> because we just had to submit it. But essentially, I think um, there's so many opportunities here. And what Whitman really does try to do is get connected to alum. And the alum also have opportunities for working with Whitties because one thing about Whitman, they really love to stay connected with um, past Whitman students. So in that sense, we're all able to get connected and well-oriented with other people who have experience and interests that are similar to yours. But yeah, I hope I answered that. Yeah, I can add a little bit. Um, it also seems that the student who asked this question is interested particularly about study abroad programs um, in terms of connection with financial. Yeah, they just followed up and clarified. Um, but um, in terms of financial resources for international students, there's plenty of them. Um, sometimes, I don't know, this might sound weird. It's not like it happens, but like sometimes you just forget that you're an international student because you are put in the same playing field as anyone else. Um, they do, you do have sort of like different resources that are added on to uh, because you are an international student. And there's other things that are a little bit different, but in terms of opportunities, you are not left out of them for being an international student. And, uh, and so is the case for studying abroad. If that makes any sense, uh, I hope that makes sense. It does make sense in my, in my mind, but um, yeah. So in that sense, you do have opportunities even as an international student to study abroad. And the amount, uh, what's great about um, studying abroad programs, unfortunately, I wasn't able to participate because of the pandemic, but I did a lot of research on it because I was going to um, uh, study abroad. But um, the amount of scholarship that you get awarded will be automatically applied to your study abroad program. So let's say you have a full ride to Whitman, then that guarantees that you'll be having also a full ride for um, your study abroad programs. There might be some extra fees, but as far as I know, they also have some extra funding to cover extra fees that are not covered by like um, tuition and whatnot. But in terms of if your concern is a little bit about financial aid resources for studying abroad, there's plenty of them. 
um, especially for international students, because we do get awarded a uh, very generous financial aid package. Fantastic. Um, so I am going to answer the this uh, question about A-level students getting college credit, and then we'll move on to two other questions that we have in the chat before we start wrapping up here. Um, A-level students, um, can you get college credit for those grades? Um, when you apply to Whitman, our A-levels are not required for us, and therefore that is not something that we automatically give you credit for. However, our professors are very open, they're very in touch with you, they love our international students, so you may speak with them, you may also speak to the registrar's office and see how we can work with you. Um, so that's the answer for that. Um, uh, if Namandi and Marian can speak a little bit to the Asian community, but the question that I will answer that I will ask next is there's a student who says I am a black student and I'm incredibly excited about coming to Whitman. I am, however, quite anxious about the ease at which I might make friends with people outside of my culture and all of that. So I'd like to know how social life is there taking that into consideration. Um, so yeah, Namandi and then Marian. Yeah, of course. Um, so definitely being a Black student here, for me, I've been able to find my community. Um, like I said previously, I am one of the presidents for the Women of Color Voices on campus. So what we do, this is a safe space for women of color. And um, it's not just limited to Black women. Um, all women of color are invited on, into the space. And what we do is we put on events on the weekends where women can come together and just sort of discuss their week and anything that pertains to women and of color around the world, essentially. And this weekend, we are actually having a, a brunch event that will take place um, as a sweet little cute girl um, celebration before we all go to the lovely Taste of Africa. We also have Black Student Union on campus, which is a space open to all Black students, not just limited to um, with women identifying students. And also it is open to both international students and students of, um, and African-American identifying students, but we also have Whitman African Association Club, which is for strictly just the students who identify as African students here on campus. So I feel like for me as uh, somebody who's, who came from a place where I was always a part of the majority to now I the minority, my transition into Whitman um, was definitely a little bit shocking. I'm not going to lie to you at some point. And I really appreciate, mind you, like if you can see, these are my braids, like they're pretty long. And it's interesting when you walk downtown because it is a rural Washington and people are like, oh my gosh, how long did it take you to grow your hair? So I always have a moment of pause where I'm like, do I tell this person that these are extensions or do I just be like, you know, since I was three years old. So you will get like little questions where people, I'm not necessarily sure, like um, just about like just certain things. I mean, some people will ask you where you come from and really want more explanations about where you come from. But I think um, that's sure of a, a chance to sort of, learn, um, like teach other people about your culture, where you come from. So I think definitely being an international student, I haven't felt any um, issues when it comes to trying to connect with the um, American students here. Essentially, you'll be put in spaces like in your classes where you will be the only Black student, right? And at some point, some people like expect answers from you and you're like, I'm not American. I have no idea. I'm also going through this experience with you. Um, but everyone's pretty understanding. They really want to learn more about your culture, where you come from. And uh, in turn, you also want to know more about the culture here in America. Like, as they say, like, not everything they'll see on TV about African countries or like the other parts of the world is exactly true. And same goes for American places, too. So definitely socializing is will be a fun thing as long as you're outgoing and you're willing to make friends and talk to people I think you'll have an amazing experience but like sometimes they'll just be a little confused about the length of your hair which is fine it's fine <laughs> yeah I, I think something that I would like to add um to what Namanda said is that just know that you are not alone in this experience there's other students who are also coming from different cultures and countries and you are going to be you know experiencing similar things and you got one another so I think that's what's so important about the international um, student community here. It's like we're pretty close, pretty tight, that we understand that we're not alone in these experiences navigating like a different country or like the American system or um, just being in a, in a rural community. I think that's what's important um, as well. In terms of the South Asian student community here on campus, I've worked with them pretty closely because of the Whitman Events Board. 
uh, they put a lot of events together, a lot of cultural events. Um, so SASA, it's known as SASA. You can also follow them on Instagram. And even the clubs and organizations that Amanda mentioned, you can also find them on Instagram, if you have Instagram. Um, and I definitely advise that because just to see the kind of events that they put together. But SASA, which is the South Asian Student Association, they do put a lot of events together. It's a pretty tight community. Some of my closest friends are South Asian. So that's how I know about the events because they invite me and I go. Uh, but then we have like Diwali and then Holi. We also celebrate all these different um, cultural um, days here on campus. And um, yeah, it is just, it's just very fun. And it's a very open and welcoming community as well. But it's a pretty tight community from, from what I've seen and working closely with them with event planning. Okay, fantastic. Um... I think we have one last question there and it says, do I have to pay to stay on campus for breaks? And um, Greg, if you can answer that real quick and then I'll have a final answer for us. Very quick. Uh, yes, uh, great question. There, there are more and more students staying uh, on campus over summer. I understand that before I came here, the number was just a, a small handful. Now, I think last year, we have about 40. Uh, there is a fee. Uh, it is a very small fee of $150, and the fee has been the same for years now. Um, there are, the services are limited uh, over summer, but you have a safe place to stay on campus. And typically, people who stay on campus over summer are those who do summer research or internships or have, very, or have some other reasons to stay here uh, for summer because perhaps uh, they uh, don't want to um, go to their home countries. OK, thank you so much, Greg. All right. OK, so as we wrap up here, um, I want to once again thank all the attendees I hope that you will come to Whitman and if you need any more information, please feel free to email any one of us. And before I conclude, I know for Namandi and Marianne, this is an extremely exciting time. They will be graduating, which brings me lots of joy, but also a bittersweetness because I have been here with you guys for four years. Um, so this is an exciting time. So as we close off our session for the two of you, I'm wondering, as you look back to when you were in this place, right, thinking about, oh my God, where am I going to go to college? What is one little piece of advice you would give your younger self? Um, and then with that, yeah, take it away, Namandi and then Marianne. Yeah, of course. Um, so definitely this was a stressful time and it's less than a month until you guys have to really make your decision. And I think for me, what really supported me, just really pay attention to the schools that really want you, the schools that really take the time to um, speak to you, reach out to you as much as possible. And that will be amazing. And I do encourage you to if there are any panels, any student talks that are taking place to go to all of those and ask all the questions that you need, because I feel like um, I was a little sh like it's weird. I was like college shy. I'm not necessarily shy, but I was college shy because I was like, I don't know like what I want. I don't know who wants me. But what women did do is like they really took the time to like, hey, no Monday, how is it going? How are you feeling? Um, do you have any questions? Do you have any concerns? How can we help make your decision process much easier? So a school that wants to lift the weight off of you and helps you make the decision much earlier is a school I encourage you to go to. And I know the deadline's May 1st. I made mine like what two weeks earlier because I was really sure like this is the place that I wanted to be at. So yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to echo to what Numanda said. Um, just really a participating in the events. Um, like, you know, know who uh, what school really wants you um, in there um, in there with them um, something that I will tell my younger self is reach out ask questions don't be shy um, you know that you have Veronica you have Greg reach out to them you have senior interns like us you can go into the Whitman.edu website there's going to be a chat bubble that pops up Numanda and I are there so I'm, I'm doing some promo right here for for Unibody which is the, the chat um, app that you can use connect with us ask questions, we're more than happy to support you. It's very important that you get to know about the student experience here as well, um, just like how we're talking to you um, today. So yeah, just really reach out, get to know the resources. Um, don't be shy to ask questions. Um, there's not such thing as um, a not a good question type of thing. So yeah, I, that's what I will tell my um, younger self and also um, know about the opportunities that the community around the school has to offer as well. So I, did, I was doing a lot of research on Walla Walla as well and the history of Walla Walla, I think it was, it was so much fun, but um, yeah, just just get to know what resources are around you um, and fun things that you can, you can do. So explore the area. Not many of us were able to travel, but at least, you know, we have technology 
So look at all the virtual tours, connect with the students, ask questions to admission officers, to our international student, our best advisor and whatnot. So really just, just be informed. Fantastic, thank you. Greg, any last words before we end? And the last words, you know, I, I was going to say this, I used to work for 15 years on a, on a campus with 6,000 international students, 6,000. And here we have 200, a uh, little less than that, and the experience is vastly different. And it's vastly better. Um, you are not just a number, you are a real person, you recognize everybody, you know everyone by, uh, by, by name, and there is always support that you can find. And this is, uh, you know, on those, with these huge schools, that, that, that is just a very different experience um so um yeah uh, we'll see you soon and uh, respond to my emails because the emails will be coming thank you okay thank you all so much again our attendees thank you for sharing your evening with us we really look forward to seeing you on campus uh, marianne and omandi are going to graduate but greg and i will be here to welcome you uh have a wonderful evening thank you so much see ya